Welcome everybody to this uh, space of uh, a wonderful stitch and um, print workshop, which Jen is going to lead for us, Jennifer Collier with us today. I'm just going to make sure Jen is unmuted. Um, Jen, could you just unmute yourself? I've managed to mute you. Um, so I'm just going to make sure you're fully yeah, there. I'm unmuted. <laughs> Perfect. And um, everybody, welcome. It's really lovely to be here. I'm Nicola Thomas, and I'm your host um, for this next workshop. Um, and we're going to be working with Jen, making these very wonderful flowers which Jen is pointing out on the screen you can see a is it a paper rose paper and rose. a what a five point origami flower Jen absolutely yeah fantastic so um folks we we are in a, this lovely zoom space which is both personal and impersonal at the same time we can see each other's pictures we can see into each other's spaces please um we are recording so just ensure you um are, are aware of that um and i would love it if you could perhaps introduce yourself in the chat um perhaps uh share with us um uh, where, where you're zooming in from today um uh, how you've come to know jen and we're also going to use that chat as a way for you to ask questions because because part of the workshop that we've got today is that Jen and I are going to be having a lovely conversation about her work and about what she's doing, as well as Jen guiding us through making these um, beautiful flowers as well. So um, uh, I think we are probably almost ready to start. I'm just bringing in a, another set of people who've been in the waiting room. And we're going to have a little bit of this sort of people zipping in and out of the waiting room, because I expect if you're a Zoom aficionado now, you know that um, sometimes you drop out and your Wi-Fi has a little glitch and you have to kind of rejoin a Zoom. So I just want to reassure you that I am in charge of the waiting room so that Jen is not distracted and I will readmit you um, if you uh, find yourself in a pickle and need to leave or need to have a comfort break midway through the Zoom. This is your space, so use it in the way that you're comfortable with. Um, for those of you who have just arrived, welcome. We're going to be working with Jen over the course of the, the next while to uh, make uh, paper flowers with her and have a conversation with Jen. So do pop your name and where you're from in the chat and share anything you would love to about your super fan status of, of Jen. That's always nice. And um, we will gently um, uh, start to move. I can see that uh, Julia's in Blustery Devon and we've got Kate, one of your near neighbours, Jen, from the Toxeter, fortunate lit to live not far from Unit. Oh, oh. fantastic. <laughs> So Jen, uh, how are you doing today? I'm really good, thank you Nicola, and thank you so much for um, doing the hosting for me so I don't have to try and uh, do magic internet things and talk and demonstrate at the same time, so I do appreciate it, thank you. Well, that is just my pleasure. And um, a few years ago, I got to know you through um, a creative collaboration project we were doing, so it, which was called Risk Makers. And so I like the fact that you're here holding us today as we take these gentle steps towards making something for ourselves. So um, we thought we would do today that we would we would get cracking making. Yeah. And Jen, you're going to kind of set us off leading our workshop and then gently as we all get into our pace we'll start having a conversation and learning more about your craft. That's brilliant thank you Nicola. So I think I'm going to say over to you Jen and then Wonderful. I will keep an eye on what's going on in the chat. There is one quick technical question which someone has popped into the chat which let me just scroll back saying I don't have any yahoo would a print stick or pva be better because some other people may have this question just before yeah, we um, get cracking. It's not ideal 
because you're holding it for much, much longer. So something like a glue gun or strong clear glue works best. I would say, as you're here now, use what you've got, just hold it a little bit longer. But in future, you'll know by doing the steps, you'll hold in your head. Um, but it can be che cheeky uh, cheats like holding something with one hand while you're making with the other, or um, I use paper clips to hold things. So with one of them, it will certainly work just using paper clips. So don't panic if you haven't got everything. Um, and I am gonna talk you through the essential materials and pretty bits you might want to find later on. So hopefully you'll all make bouquets and bouquets of flowers that you'll share on uh, social media. If you do, do tag Digital Craft Festival in and also if you could hash, um, hashtag Jennifer Collier make, then I will get to see these as well. It's a really, really lovely thing to do and then we can all see each other's as well would be really nice. Fantastic. Right, I'm just going to ensure that we're all muted, but I think we're ready to roll. Thank you, Jen. Perfect. Take it, take it away. So, um, if you do have any questions during the course of the time I'm talking, do pop them in the chat, chat box and Nicola will spot them. Um, if Or if I'm going too quick or too slow, um, I'm going to try and pace it about right. But essentially today we're making two types of paper flowers. So we're going to make um, a paper rose and a five point origami flower. The essential materials you need are what you can see here. Any found in recycled paper will work doesn't really matter on size, which I'll we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, strong clear glue that we've just spoken about. If you have only got PVA or Pritt stick, just go with it for today, but you'll find it easier and quicker next time with a, with a stronger glue. Um, a ruler is just to make your templates that again, I'll talk about in a moment. A pencil, um, a pair of scissors and paper clips. The first time I did this workshop, I didn't, I hadn't even thought of the paper clips and people were just holding these flowers for ages and it takes waiting for them to dry. So it's miles, miles quicker with paper clips. If you don't have that, actually I found Kirby grips or hair clip, clip, clips work quite well as a cheat, just as things around your house. Um, and then non-essential bits, things you might want to think about um, next time, kind of to, to pretty things up and add to the detail. Um, I've got PVA glue and a paintbrush and some glitter, and this is just to put sparkly little bits on the edge of the, the petals. Um, I've got skewers or wire, like green gardening wire. Either of these will work. I've got buttons and beads to decorate, and I've got scrap card to make a template. Um, so these are non-essential, you can participate today. And if it is that you're panicking at home thinking, oh, I haven't got any of these things, just watch and learn the process or play with what paper you have got and it might just not be glued together. Um, so the first thing I'm going to show you is the paper rose. I'm gonna ease you in gently to the session. And with each of these, I'm gonna show you the stages a few times. So ideally, if you can make sure you've got your scissors and some paper on hand and you can be making at the same time, pick a paper that you quite fancy. I love sheet music, I use it all the time. I love the papers to have a history and a narrative. They're all end of life papers that I'm using. So what I'm going to do is with my paper is I'm just gonna cut a wonky circle and you'll be pleased to know the wonkier the better, better. Paper flowers are not um, perfectly shaped in nature. Obviously, if you do a big piece of paper, you get a big flower. If you do a little piece of paper, you get a little flower. I would aim for something medium-ish, kind of A4 or smaller for your first one. And I'm just cutting into this a really wonky circle. And as you'll see, it doesn't matter if it's neat, if it's slightly on the wonk. I'm just cutting around so I've got a, per, uh, a circle. Now you can make templates for this. I tend to use my scrap card to make templates. And when I'm running this in workshops in real life, I have lots of wonky circles for people to draw around. But you can see it doesn't need to be neat. I don't use a compass. The wonkier, the better. And so out with the stage, we all got a paper circle. Nicola, have you got a paper circle? Yes, yeah. I got slightly distracted by the waiting room, but I have got a paper okay, circle. Okay, you've got a paper circle. So hopefully if you've got a paper circle, what you're going to do now is you're going to cut into it a bit like when you're peeling um, an orange or an apple 
without breaking the core, which I can't actually do. Um, I can do it with paper. So I'm just uh, snipping around to make a coil, a spiral, until I get to the middle and you end up with kind of like a little roundy bit. So you can see I've got this coil that I've made in my paper going all the way around. It doesn't need to be dead neat. If your coil is really narrow, you end up with quite a wide fat flower. If these are quite wide, you end up with a blousy flower. But the good thing is they'll always look different. Even if you're using the exact same paper, they're all gonna look different. So hopefully at this stage, you've got some paper with a coil cut into it. Then what you're going to do is with the neat side facing you, and it doesn't matter if you've got a double-sided paper like me, it doesn't matter, but sometimes it's white on the back. So with your decorated side face up, starting with the pointed end, so I imagine it a bit like a snake, the snake's tail in the coil, I'm just gonna fold a little hem all the way around on the outside edge. So can you kind of see, starting on the pointed end, on the outside edge and the way I do this is actually with one hand I'm kind of pushing it down and then with my second hand squishing it in place I'm going to flip it over so you can see see it's not neat at all it doesn't need to be massive doesn't need to be tiny doesn't need to be neat this is just adding to the the blousiness of the flower quite often when I'm doing this in workshops some people don't bother with this but actually it doesn't look quite as flowery would be the best way of describing it. So Jen, um, yep. I've already managed to tear my my rose. Um, Don't should panic. I, what should I do? Just so what I would it. do is little dot of glue. So is it bad if it's torn apart, dot of glue, overlap and put the two together. If it's just a slight tear in somewhere in the paper, just ignore it and carry on. You won't see it. Brilliant. So, but with these, they're really forgiving. And I quite often would accidentally make a massive tear. If the paper's quite fragile, you could just get a bit of your glue, overlap them and glue it back together, it's fine. Or if it's a little tear in the edge, just ignore it. You won't notice it at all. So that's a good question. Well done on testing that bit for me, Nicola. <laughs> I think I'm, my coil might have been a little bit narrow. Yeah. <laughs> but the great thing with this is, by the time you get to your your next one, you know what you're doing. Your first flower was always a bit more rustic, let's say, shall we? So the second ones are beautifully neat um, and you get better and better and you'll find how wide you like them. So they all look a little bit different. So I've just twisted around and I'm going to plop, pop mine on the back so you can see the back. So you see I've got this little hem all the way around. I'm purposely doing quite a big flower so it's easier for you to see, but of course they can go much, much smaller than this. So have we got an edge on ours? Oh, I'm I'm kind of in the place where I've got an edge. Ah, and I should point just... out, I didn't tell you where to stop, kind of just somewhere near the roundy bit doesn't really matter this will do a job at the end it will make sense while people are just catching up i remember the first time i got a parcel from you and it contained this paper rose and i was so ah. as a sort of like i guess like a little extra special yeah. thing and i think i bought my um i think i bought a bird a bird um a bird box from you and oh, I was so wonderful. enchanted with this lovely gift that I had had so it's very exciting to learn how to do it today. How to do them. I do use them a lot because as I'm sure you can imagine I do end up with tons from workshops and um, so I do tend to use them as gift wrapping um, on things near Christmas or if I know something is a present or to someone really lovely I will use them as gift wrapping on there. Mm. So when we've got to this stage where we've got a little hem all the way around the outside. What we're going to do is starting with this pointed end again, we're going to twist inwards. Okay, see I'm folding inwards. So my decorated side is face up and I'm just twisting round. 
you'll notice I'm not doing it tight. If I do it really tight, I end up with a really uptight little rosebud. I want quite a nice blousy flower, but I am going to show you a cheat at the end if you get your tension wrong. So I'm just from that pointed end, so it should get fatter and fatter as you go out. A really good tip I find is a finger below and a thumb above. And if it's starting to get tricky, see how I can kind of do it the other way and just twist the paper around so it doesn't uncoil. And everyone's flowers will look different depending on how big a hem, how wide they cut it, how big their paper was, what the pattern is. And this is how you can end up with really lovely varied um, flowers. And then when you've got to the end, Oh, I'm like, way not, I'm yeah, so no, not close to the end. Yeah, don't worry, just take your time. Just remember not to let go is what I was going to say, is when you get somewhere near, so you're just coiling it round and you kind of just stop when you've got this, this funny roundy bit that's left. And I'll talk to you about how to secure it together when we get. Jen, can I ask a question? So I've of course got, you can. How is the what did you call it? The hem up or down? So you're having your hem face down. So that's the back. And I'm twisting it round with the hem face down, decorated side up. So can you see the hems there? Eric, thank you. So if you if you show, hold yours up to the camera, Kay, I might be able to see it. So the hem face yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, don't worry if it's a little hem. And then twist with your hem on the, in fact, I'm just going to quickly unroll mine so you can see. So this is my hem. Yeah. And then I'm twisting inwards so that the hem is face down, the decorated side face up. Can everyone kind of see that? All right. I realise it's a bit tricky because of the lighting. And I'm just twisting around. And I promise with all of you, when, when uh, you do your second one, it will be miles neater. So um, a question in the chat is, which direction do I coil? Doesn't matter. It's whichever way you've cut into, whether you're left-handed or right-handed. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter at all. You just want your decorated side face up and your hem face down. Nice. So it doesn't matter which direction you're coiling. I keep undoing mine just to check that I'm doing it right, but I think yeah. that's probably a bad idea. I should just yeah, crack no, no, on. <laughs> just go with it. I promise all of you, go with it. And it, once we do another one, you'll be like, oh, okay, my second one's better. So let's just go with it. And hopefully you're nearly at a stage where you're coiled around. In fact, I can see Cam Kay's camera on, so I can see she's nearly there as a, as a good guide. And this is the stage, I've got my thumb inside so it doesn't ping undone. And I've got my hand on the front, so I'm kind of holding it together. If you find that your flower's really, really loose, what you can do is you can get your scissors and I use them like a little pair of tweezers and I can tighten it. Or if I think it's too tight, I can loosen it at this stage. So it doesn't really matter how you've coiled, you can change your decision now. And then when I'm happy with the tension and how my flower is sitting, what I'm going to do is on the back, hopefully you can all see, I've got all that coil inside and this is the back of my flower now, okay? And I've got this funny spare roundy bit that's gonna come into play now. So what I'm going to do is get my glue, and this is the tricky bit, taking the lid off with only one hand. Um, and I'm just gonna squirt my glue inside the coil so i'm going to put quite a bit inside at the very start all the way around and then i'm going to put a big bit on that roundy flap that's kind of appeared by making okay does that make sense so my glue squirted inside and around a bit on there and then i'm going to push that down and when i push my thumb inside can you see how it's going to capture all those coils mm -hmm. this is where you want the strong glue. So the people who haven't got strong glue, you're just gonna be holding this for a little bit longer because um, you want it to dry. And it's always a temptation now is to let go and go, oh, look what I've done. 
but hold it longer than you think. About a minute, a good cheat is like I'm doing. I'm actually squidging the basin. It's a very technical word there, squidging, to kind of push that paper together so it holds in place. And about a minute, you'll be holding it. If you've got a glue gun, you can use a glue gun. The reason I don't is, um, well, I'm terrible for burning myself for one. And I don't like the glue gunny strands you get everywhere. And the way I'm going to actually um, wire this, it causes problems if there's bits of glue gun in the way. So this is why I favour this way of doing it. So it should be about now I can let go. Can you see how I've got my beautiful flower that isn't hopefully going to ping open, which will bring me and I'm going to show you a pretty bit that you guys can carry on gluing, but just for future reference that's useful. There's two ways of actually um, presenting this. The simplest, and you've probably got one in your kitchen drawer, a skewer, just poke a hole, dob a little bit of glue on there. And could you see how I could then pop that in a vase of flowers with just a skewer in? Dead, dead easy. Another way of doing it is using the green gardening wire. You can actually just get this online, dead, dead cheap. It, it's like literally not even pence a piece. I've just folded it into um, a U shape and then I can literally just poke it down my flower to attach a wire. And when I've done um, like hemp party workshops where they've wanted corsages or bouquets. So you could just wire it like that or you could of course then wire it onto the skewer. But even nicer than that is where our buttons and beads come into play. So it might be that we actually pick and I'm gonna pick a bright color button so you can see it. I'm gonna use kind of the two legs if it makes sense of the button, slide it down. And then when I pop that into my flower, and I will point out, you see, I'm kind of not doing it both in the middle point. I'm catching one of my wire legs to one side of a bit of paper and another to another side of a bit of paper. So it doesn't just pull through the bottom. But then I end up with a really nice button or a bead inside to look down onto. So you can actually add a little bit of bling or embellishment to your flowers is quite nice. Mm. So that's just something to think about later. Don't feel you have to think about it now. So hopefully, has everyone managed to get one unwired flower that's kind of holding together, hopefully? We've got a question from Sarah in the chat and she'd love to, if you could just explain about sticking the large bit at the bottom again. And I remember there being need to be lots of glue. <laughs> yeah, lots and lots of glue. What I'm gonna do is just a dead, dead quick demonstration of a little one to help you out. So if anyone who missed a stage, so what I'm gonna do, and if anyone has already done that, you can obviously join me making a second flower. I'm gonna do quite a little one this time to prove they really can be wonky and they really don't need, they can be any size. So once I've cut the circle, I'm gonna cut into it a spiral, it can be as fat or as thin as you want. See, I've ended up with a funny jaggedy bit there. It really doesn't matter. So then I'm going to fold a little hem can be as wide or as narrow as you want. Obviously, the smaller they get, the fiddlier they get. So on the pushing my hem downwards, then I'm going to nearly there. So hem all the way round until I kind of get to the roundy bit. Then I'm going to get this pointy end, my hem face down, decorated side face up, and I'm twisting inwards like so and obviously I do make it look easy when I'm doing it quick to get to the right point and then once you've twisted around and around hem on the outside you will end up with this funny flappy roundy bit that we're talking about so on the inside we've got the coil that you can see and this is the bottom of it sorry I'm just trying to get it so that that's not in the way I'm going to get my glue, I'm going to poke my glue inside to catch the coil, I'm popping it all around, and then on this flat roundy bit, I'm popping a big bit of glue on there, so both layers, so if there's a kind of belt, belts and braces here, if one bit doesn't catch another will, and then I'm sticking that funny round bit to the bottom, and then sometimes it doesn't sit very neatly, so I'm just going to give it a little a squadge, that technical term again, a little squish and a squadge 
so that it holds together and it holds all of that coil sticks to that funny roundy bit and I can just give it a squadge and manipulate and then again if I want to and this is a good cheat if you haven't got a second pair of hands to hold is if you pop your wire in now it actually holds it for you as well mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can see how you can do a little tiny one as well there and so Laura who had the situation of the large bit at the bottom getting yeah. ripped off yeah. could you just pop a patch like use it as yeah, a patch? Yeah she just glue that same bit back on use it as a patch mm -hmm. no one is going to see your bum for want of a better way of putting it at the bottom no one is going to see that bit so this is the one I've made you can see it has dried so they're not dead neat on the bottom but you could of course think about making petals but once they're together in a bunch you don't notice the base of them anyway is quite nice so a really nice thing to do later on when you've made flowers and you've wired them you might think about cutting out petal shapes out of books um, or papers and actually that can be part of the foliage along the length of the wire or the stick can be really really nice great oh, I really just loved I'm, I don't know if anybody else thought this but it was really lovely seeing your hands move making that small rose because it is the point at which you I really appreciate the fact that your 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 fingers have developed over the years where you've been making such dexterity and skill so it's just it's very beautiful watching you make the rose <laughs> Jen. <laughs> I do it quite quick in workshops when I'm doing something called Suffolk puffs which is um, a traditional embroidery technique but I do it in paper where I stitch around the outside of a piece of paper and I'm literally doing this and because I can do it without even looking. And sometimes, some, especially when I'm working with young adults, they're like, you're not even looking at what you're doing anymore. <laughs> so I think some things you do automatically. Mm, yeah, no. So um, a few people are asking if um, we, we can sort out things around light, Jen. Um, uh, I'm not sure whether your, your body might just be getting in the way of a light source. Uh, on the on the towards the gray steel end of the yeah um, it's it's very it's, hard yeah. because um i've had to put a screen up in front of my husband's studio uh window because I, I haven't got internet access at mine so it's whether if i work here you might yeah i think it's whenever i move mm. so i'll try and move slower and okay. hopefully it won't um Judge the light, so I do apologise. No, it's a, it's it's the nature of of Zoom workshops. Yeah, because I've been doing them in the evenings, and of course it isn't light. So, and it's the window. There's nothing I can do about it. No, it's so all good. I do apologise. So, um, Emma Emma asks, is it better to have thicker or thinner paper, or doesn't it really matter? It's a bit like Goldilocks, not too thick, not too thin, just right. Certainly for your first one. Um, I do use the book. Um, Country Diary of an Edward Wardian Lady quite a lot um, and it is quite thick but it is entirely doable um, using something thicker like that. I have gone as thick as wallpaper, um, I have gone as thin as tissue paper but for your first one I would suggest something like book pages is really really good because it's not too thick not too thin. Likewise with size I've done these so they're really teeny tiny or I've done them where I've drawn around a bin lid before um, so you can go really massive and you can go tiny but for your first ones I would recommend you know a manageable size just to get used to the technique and you can decide what you like what papers work best for you so i'm curious whether people can hold up their rows so we can have a little look and i'm conscious that some people may be onto their second or even third rows by now so you may have all sorts to show us <laughs> oh we've got some very lovely examples here and it's just so nice to think that you know 59, 58 of us are making together yeah. uh, in all sorts of different parts of the world. We've got people from Texas <laughs> and Devon and all Aww, over the place. So quite extraordinary. We've got some maps. You like using maps, Jen. You're a great oh, fan yeah, of absolutely. maps. Absolutely. Vintage maps and all sorts. I always love looking. Um, sometimes I see your Instagram post of, of commissions that you've made of people's of special places that people ask you to put into um, their uh, lampshades or whatever. And I always think that's a really special thing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, maps I really love. 
but I've stopped using them for things like this because it's quite hard to see on the screen and they're very busy. So that's why I'm picking quite plain papers to demonstrate with. But of course, at home, it can be anything. Um, it, things like toilet paper wrappers, it can really can be anything around the home. Um, things, papers you don't think are going to be very nice once they're used in this way, you just see snippets. Magazines are quite nice because they're shiny paper, so they're very easy to manipulate. They work quite well. Mm, nice. So if everyone's got a paper rose, I'm tempted to say, whilst we're feeling brave, shall we go on to the origami flower? I think that's so for, really nice. For this, you need your ruler, your pencil and your scissors. And what I've actually done is I've cheated and I've made myself a template. And as you can see here labelled, it's actually mine's 10 centimetres by 10 centimetres. And it just means I don't have to measure out each time. If you don't have a ruler, I'm sure you all know the trick that if you want to make a perfect square, you can actually just... Um, fold a corner and then cut that and it will make a perfect square so if you haven't got a ruler you can absolutely do that instead and make your squares and what I want you to all do is now cut me a square of paper and I'm going to do mine 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters on my template but you can obviously do yours a different uh, dimension it just needs to be a perfect square um, like before, if you go really big or really little, it's more fiddly. So that's why I'm going to I'm suggesting this as a dimension. And do be quite neat because this is origami. We do need it to be really neat and precise. So I've just cheated with my template to speed me up. Another thing I do quite often is a really good cheat is actually I would lay it on several pieces of paper at once so if I was to cut all of these out at once I don't need to cut for the other petals so I can just cut along the line and I can do several all at once I'm going to move everything off my desk and so I'm cutting, taking my time to get nice, neat squares. But as you can see, I have completely cheated. So it means I can chat later when we're doing the other ones. And I've actually cut out a few all at once at the same time. OK, I've, well, I've got my 10 centimetre square ready. Perfect. So hopefully, if we've got to the stage where we've got a square, what we're going to do is folding. And this is going to take a bit of concentration. And to start with, you'll all think, oh, my gosh, this is fiddly. Stick with me. I promise whenever I do this workshop, people are I'm not going to go at that. It's too difficult. And then they spend the rest of the day just enjoying this technique. It's really lovely. It's the sort of thing you can sit doing in front of the telly without having to think once it's gone in your head. Obviously, I will demonstrate it a few times. So what you're going to do with your square, you're going to fold it in half. If you've got a one sided paper, um, you want to fold it to the white side. Mine is a, a double sided paper, so it doesn't matter. So I'm just folding it point to point and I'm going to show my age here. A bit like a terry toweling nappy. So I've got a triangle with my paper. And make sure you put a really nice sharp crease. So once I found my point, I actually just press down quite hard on there. Perfect. And then once we've got that, we're gonna do the same again, but halfway. So we're going from this top point to the bottom one. So this is my open edge, sorry, so you can see. And I'm putting this bottom point up to the middle and just take your time lining up and then put a sharp crease across there. And you've probably guessed what I'm gonna do next. The same on the other side. So with this one, it's very repetitive. To the middle and to the outside edge and a sharp crease. And this is a bit like, um, 
you know, at school, well, again, I'm showing my age here, when you used to play a game called Consequences where you did this, it's a very similar thing, like the way you fold to that game. So I've got these to the middle and hopefully we've all got a funny little square with these funny little triangles on. Mm -hmm. This is where it gets slightly more complicated. What I'm going to do now, and I'm trying to do it so that the light doesn't go in the way, I'm having to look at myself on the screen, is I'm folding halfway out. So can you see how this back line lines to the back seam there? So I'm folding it half the way out and pushing that down. You might find it easier to flip it over onto the back and just check that those seam lines line up, okay? Yep. And then you probably guessed we're gonna do the same again. So we're just going to fold it out halfway across. And if you're not sure, flip it over, fold that out. So you've got kind of like a funny, weird little almost lotus flower like that. So you should be at a stage where you've got something that looks a bit like that. That flipping over is a good idea. I didn't yeah, it's do a it really well good the first tip. time. Yeah. And you can also time. cheat and actually mark it on with a pencil while you get used to the technique, is it? Because it's paper. You can do mm. what you want, no one's going to see it. So then what we're going to do is here, we're going to fold this in to get rid of that funny triangle. So we're just going to fold it inwards like that. Hopefully you can see that okay. Mm -hmm. And then like before, any time I do something on one side, I'm going to do it on the other. So fold it inwards like that. Yep. And I will be repeating this. So anyone panicking, thinking, oh, my God, there's nowhere I'll remember. Then what we're going to do, and this is where it kind of feels like it starts to be a bit intuitive. Can you see this crease line that's already there from our folds before? We're just going to fold that back in. So we're folding these back inwards. So once I've done it on one side, I'm going to do the same on the other and fold this side inwards like this. And now when we come to put it together, I'm going to say we're not doing any more folds. We want a nice smooth curve on the back of the flower. So what I'm going to do is just put these two together can you see how I've made my petal so to glue it I want to glue right on this outside edge the reason being if I glue inside it stops my flower opening up so again using my glue and this for the people who haven't got a strong glue it's not going to matter because we're going to use paper clips or hair clips whatever you've got to hand to hold it so I've put a line of glue on the outside edge I'm twisting it round putting the two edges together popping a paper clip inside there and that's going to hold that in place to dry for me so the first time I did this I didn't think of the paper clips and everyone was having to hold these which is quite boring and tedious and what will happen when we pull the paper clip out you see it's a bit tight at the moment but it'll all loosen up again so that's why I want a nice gentle curve on the back and just a paper clip to hold that in place so the good news is you've done your first petal. The bad news is you've got to do that another four times now because we're doing a five point origami flower. But the good, other good news is it will hold in your head. We'll work through each of those steps each time we talk you through. And I promise tonight you'll all hear me when you're trying to sleep going, oh, it's that woman explaining flowers, but it really will stay with you, I promise. So once you've got your paper clip in, if you can all be drawing out for other squares, you can, of course, do the cheat that I did is, is draw one and then cut them all out at the same time. So I've completely cheated and got mine ready to rumble, my four other papers. They, of course, don't have to be all the same. Um, being a purist, um, I... Um, don't do unmatching things but actually in some of the workshops I've done it's been really really nice when people have done 
um, unmatchy things. It works quite well. But whilst you guys are cutting out, and so something else that's a nice thing as an add-on, so you don't need to really be concentrating, you can just be listening as you're cutting and getting ready, is actually if you wanted to add a little bit of bling onto your flowers, what I would do, and I'm just going to move these bits out of the way, is with my flower, some watered down PVA, um, an old brush that doesn't matter, and some glitter, what I'm actually going to do is get some scrap paper, so I've got something to catch glitter on. I never normally use glitter in my work because it gets everywhere, but it is lovely on the flowers to just catch the edges. So with a little bit of the watered down PVA, I'm just going to touch it to the very outside edges of my flower. And this is just an add-on for later on. Either type of flowers, you don't need to worry about not having time to do it now. It's just whilst you're cutting to give you a bit of time. It's another idea. Well, you all want homework, don't you? You'd be bored over Easter otherwise. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue on there. I'm getting my glitter and it's the only time I use it in my work. And I'm just gonna pour a little bit of glitter all over my flower. And I tend to put absolutely tons because I'm gonna put that back in the pot. So it's not gonna get wasted. Tap off the excess. And that will all go back into the pot. But can you see how when I move this out of the way so the camera focuses on that, how you get this lovely little bit of shine just on the edges of your flower. So it works beautifully on the rose, but also on the one you're making at the moment. So it's just something you might want to think about going on to in future to embellishing your flowers. Think about adding petals and um, think about adding a bit of bling buttons and um, they can be as complex or as um, simple as you want. Ooh. That little bit of glitter has reminded me of some of sort of Victorian postcards where they used to just put a little bit of glitter on the postcard to yeah, fill it up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It works really beautifully with the um, older papers as well, doesn't it? And it looks lovely in like um, floral display. So if you've got some real flowers, just the odd paper one poked in works really, really nicely as well. Mm. So I'm here with my gently, I've got some some sheet music, which I think I have got in my stash from my, my probably my grandparents' generation. Oh, and fantastic. I, I really love this way of, because, and it's sort of been used in a stack where nothing's been doing to it. So I do love what you said earlier about kind of bringing kind of papers, which perhaps don't have a life anymore back into circulation. Absolutely, it's, it's to me, it, I feel really strongly um, that I wouldn't cut up papers that have mean in, have means people, but to actually give them new life, things that are going into landfill or something that's really personal to yourself um, or to people who have commissioned the work is absolutely brilliant. One of the um, really nice things that I've enjoyed working with you on was actually some... I asked uh, you if you wouldn't mind making a small pair of, of, of your binoculars out of some theatre programmes that I had from my parents. Um, and I, it was, it's just very special now seeing those binoculars each day because it was, it's just a, it was a nice way of bringing those papers from, you know, ba basically a drawer into everyday life. Absolutely, rather just... than it just being on a shelf, yeah. Mm. So if people have got their papers cut ready, I'm going to run through the stages. Obviously, I can do it a bit quicker this time, but just for anyone who needs a recap and we can be making along together. So we're folding a decorated side on the outside, folding inwards to a point, and you'll all be thinking already terry toweling nappy. Nice crease. Then we're folding up to the middle. Nice crease. Up to the middle again. And hopefully you're managing to keep up with me. I'm trying not to go too quick. Perfect. And then this is the point that gets a bit more complicated. Trying to remember we're folding outwards, but only halfway. And if you're struggling to remember, just flip it over 
check that the creases line up and then just squash that flat. Same on the other side. Squash that seam flat. Fab. And then what we're going to do is fold these flaps inwards, just up to the line of the square. And again, fold it flat. Like so. We should be at this stage, hopefully. And then this is where, as I say, I feel it becomes obvious because you can see the crease lines. We're folding it back inwards. We're folding this one back inwards. And then we can twist the two together. So a little line of glue on the very outside edge, on the inside of the flower. So just along here is where I've got my glue. So when I touch one side to the other, slide my paper clip in, it holds that in place. And just so you can see the one that I did before, I should be able to take that, see how it kind of all opens up so you can see all that work inside the petal once I've got the paper clip out. But you can, of course, it's a nice reveal at the end if you just leave your paper clips in to be sure, don't feel you have to take them out yet. And for the people who have got using PVA or Pritt stick, you might want to wait until this evening with a nice little uh, glass of something lovely to steady your, steady your nerves after this experience and, and take your paper clips out then. So have we got two petals? Yeah. Yeah, so I'll just, we'll keep going. I'll just be demonstrating on the screen, um, folding these in, but obviously, shout out if I'm going too quick or anyone's struggling or forgotten what they're doing but hopefully we should be at the stage where you can just watch and make along without me having to bore you too much now you will hear my voice in your heads tonight so folks if you have any questions uh for Jen link to the make or just questions that you're interested in learning more about Jen's uh, craft and process and how she works as an artist, do pop them into the chat. Um, and then we can continue this dialogue. I'm, I never thought I would recognize these little, I can, I can start to feel how the repetitive process is working. Um, it's really Jen, nice actually. Nice. It's, it's, yeah, I, I do enjoy it when you can switch off your brain. And I think that's why I like hand stitching so much because you can just carry on keeping doing the same thing without having to think too much. Mm. It's quite nice. So um, Jane has a question, which is how did you attach the button to the first flower? So this was using the um, wire. So what I did is I popped the legs of my wire, so to speak, I've bent it in a U shape, popped the legs through the wire, and then I can just poke it down through. And because it's wire, it will punch through and punch in. If you don't have any wire, you can use the skewer, but of course you could still just glue the little button in the top. It would have the same effect. This is just much more secure because it can't pull the wire through. So you can just glue buttons on the top works absolutely fine and I am going to show you a similar trick for this one once we've got our all our five petals made okay well I'm on my I'm on my third I think I got that one right I might need to um ask you to go through the directions just yeah once no that's more good so again. I will do it um I'll go through the directions so if anyone's at a stage where they want to do the next one. So I've got my piece of paper, I'm folding point to point. So folding point to point. And I'm going from the outside point to the middle. It is sometimes only multitasking, trying to talk and <laughs> work at the same time. It's forgetting which one you're doing. Then I'm folding to the middle again.
And then when I get here, I'm folding it out halfway. And then the same on the other side, folding halfway. So we can get this kind of pointy triangle thing. And then these flaps fold inwards. And then this flap, the triangle folds inwards. And then at this stage, where your creases already are, you're folding back along the lines. And it feels like a lot of work, but I promise you in one petal's time, you'll all agree it really will have been worth it. And then this very outside edge, inside the flower, little line of glue, line those two up, little paper clip. And then I now have four petals. I've just got one to go. So I'm gonna run through it one last time with you and then I'll show you how to assemble. So I've got my paper again and I'm folding to the middle. You'll notice if you're using, even if you're using the same paper, just the way that you fold it and whether you see more or less decoration or not really does change the aesthetic. If you want to see more, obviously you can think about which side of the paper. I'm then folding from the outside to the middle again. Outside to the middle. So I've gone back to make a little square. And then this is where I fold halfway across. I'm just gonna check out the back that that's perfectly lined up squash my creases in halfway across and then I'm at this stage where I can fold my little triangles back in little triangles back in and then the last stage again, it's just to fold that inwards along the crease we've already got. And then on my outside edge on the inside of my flower, little line of glow, twist the two together. like so and then I have oops missed with the paper clip so I end up with all five petals this is where it gets good I promise it will be worth it and there's a question just popped up in the chat box Nicola Sorry, I muted myself yeah. while you were chatting. Um, the recording, I believe, is going to be made available. So if you missed any sections, that's the re uh, we, that's going to be available. So you'll be able to have a recap. And at least um, you can fast forward then. <laughs> and um, and then uh, Jen, just just uh, if I interrupt you, it's just to ensure that you've got your hands in the screen. So yeah. we'll see see what what rolls there, but. Yeah. I, I think I'm I'm ready to, be, yeah. to see this genius. Of this the assembling. Section. So what we're going to do is you should hopefully all have five petals. I should point out occasionally it happens where people have got more or less and it does still work actually. Um, it's a perfect size flower. So what we're going to do is start gluing them together along this inside edge in the same place, kind of, um, but on the outside. We're just going to put a little line of glue. And it's very important it's at the front and not at the back, otherwise our flower can't open up when we take our paper, put our paper clips in. And then I'm just going to put one flower to the next and pop a paper clip in. OK, so you can see how one's attached to the other. So it's trying to get it in focus. And then exactly the same again, little line of glue on the inside edge. Pop one petal to the other. Pop a little paper clip in. Little line of glue on the 
inside. So as I said, for people who haven't got strong glue, this won't matter at all because you could at least take your paper clips or hair clips out later. It's only the first flower that's more problematic. And then this is the stage. You see, I've got all four petals in here like, but that space is massive. Surely I need to make another 15 of these. But actually, you'll be surprised how much it does pull round. It's five is perfect. I have seen people who've accidentally put six in or only three and it does work. But five is the perfect amount. So I'm putting my last petal in. I'm just having to cheat because I've not brought enough paper clips home with me. And then here, I do exactly the same again. But can you see how it's going to fill all that gap? So it looks like it's not going to, but actually, I promise it really, really well. Little line of glue and a last little paper clip. I'm just going to steal this one from here. Twist this round. Twist round and you see how we end up with this flower. It looks a bit frightening still with all the paper clips in so that you can see one in a blue, blue peter here's what here's one i did earlier but it's got a little bit squashed on the journey home this is what it should look like so you take the paper clips out it all relaxes on the inside and like before we can do the same cheats if you want to wire it with a skewer you can literally just pop down that center part the skewer in there a little dot of glow which gets to the end and you could glue that in place and you could put it in um, a floral display. Um, it could be like before that we just use the wire and this is brilliant to actually attach them into things. So I could just poke my wire through the inside there so I can attach it onto mm -hmm. like a wreath. I quite often do these as Christmas wreaths, but really, really nice. And I'm sure you've already guessed, like before, a button or a bead through the legs on my wire. And I can pop that right for in there. And you see how you get this lovely centre in the flower is really, really nice. So you can add different centre pieces inside your flowers. And they don't have to be all the same. They can be all different types of paper. So you hopefully will end up with an origami flower, try and get it so the camera can see it, and at least one, if not more, paper roses. It's so magical putting this origami flower together. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> that's fantastic. I think the button idea is great because it mine doesn't have a lot of symmetry in the middle. It so... hides a multitude of sins a button. <laughs> I think that's a really lovely idea. Oh, I can imagine me getting well into a nice meditative Zen place with this folding. That's just wonderful. So that's the one I've just done and already I can take the paper clips out. Oh, nearly. It's a little bit there. But yeah, see how it does hold together. So you should end up with a beautiful flower like this and a rose, hopefully. And would you sort of just gently sort of tease apart the centre of the origami? Yeah, you absolutely folds? can. Once you've taken the paper clips out, it's not open up nat naturally. You can just um, wiggle them round, wadge them out. <laughs> well, that is very exciting. Now, I'm conscious that we're coming up to the close of our hour, which means some people will be disappearing. So I just wanted to make sure that the people who are needing to leave immediately, we just say thank you so much for being with us this afternoon and for making um, making time for making time to spend time with Jen, which is very lovely. And hopefully you've enjoyed uh, making your, and learning how to make your origami flower and paper rose. And for those of you who are um, just drawing to a close, if you've got any questions uh, for Jen um, and or any questions about the make that you would just like to ask, I'm sure Jen won't mind staying on a few minutes to uh, have those questions. Um, 
uh, just to say we can, you can feel confident moving on and making your make after the class. And yes, of course, you will have the access to the recording as well, so you'll be able to come back. But Emma just says, thank you, Jen. Lovely workshop, very relaxing. It oh, is. I'm glad to hear it. As long as no one's stressed, go, I've got to fold really quick. <laughs> well, I like, I like the fact that we've done it quite a number of times, yeah. so that I actually, I'm not a very confident maker, but I really, um, I feel quite confident that I could give this a go on yeah. my own. Yeah, absolutely. And if anyone is, as I said at the start, anyone is brave enough to share um, their flowers, I'd absolutely love to share uh, to see them. Um, I've got a hashtag on all social media that's Jennifer Collier Make, um, and it means I'll get to see it. But also, obviously, if you um, use the hashtag Digital Craft Festival, I'm sure um, the organisers behind um, the Contemporary Craft Festival will share them as well um it'd be really really nice to see Jen I know as part of your um your support to people during this horrible covid time which we've been experiencing there are some makes on your website aren't there which people can download yes thank you for I completely forgot to say yeah I've done uh, a free make for this digital craft festival that's a paper bluebell if you go to the kids area or actually you can find it through the link um on all my social media or my gallery unit 12 but throughout the whole of it's over a year now uh, we've been doing free makes um initially it was as a way of feeling like I could do something to give back obviously I couldn't go and uh, work on the front line or um yeah all feeling a bit useless so actually my tiny way of helping was actually devising free makes like this that people could do at home and um, each of them has um step-by-step -step instructions some of them have a pdf template but all of them have a little film a step-by-step -step film that's much quicker bit speeded up so that people could do these at home and i've had a lot of messages from people who were trying to homeschool or just going bonkers and lonely and no materials because of course a lot of the materials and equipment for a lot of the makes that i've seen you have to order or buy and of course you really want to be able to just grab anything you've got around the home so those are available for anyone to um to have a go at and again if you're happy to share them i'd love you to use the hashtag so that i get to enjoy them and fill my heart with joy too that would be really really lovely well Re oh, reese says yeah. she's definitely going to tag hers once it's oh finished. thank you <laughs> a little bit of feedback i'm just going to check to see oh that... i can see a few pinging up on the screen in fact what i'm going to do is if I stop the share, we should all be able to see each other then. Is that all right, Nicola? Yeah, go for it. Um, yes, perfect. So please do feel free. So I can see all these faces now. I couldn't see anything before. Oh, there's some absolutely beautiful ones. Steph's got beautiful, a uh, beautiful red button, which she's managed to find. Steph Phillips, very lovely. Oh, fantastic. Julia Littles, I'm just enjoying the inside of that. The flower in that, um, the, the different colours is beautiful. Becky's got some cracking, cracking colours too. Oh, honestly, I can't tell you how happy this has made me to see all these paper flowers appearing on the screen. Um, <laughs> that absolutely, um, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Love, Thank you so much. I love Chris's because she's got Chris Evans. You've got this beautiful kind of deep yellow, which is stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, well done. Right, I'm going to try and put the links in the chat, but I am terrible at um, technology. I can't even work out where the chat is. Rini, don't worry about being in your PJs. It's just so nice that Zoom enables us to do this in our PJs, isn't it? I just think that's the gorgeousness of this situation is that, you know, we've, we've, we've been able to join Jen today and um, you know, be together. And Mary, that's just so lovely. Thank you for sharing. Oh, it's gorgeous. And you've even managed to get a wire in. That's fantastic. Wow. Yeah. So the um, uh, Jen, the, the craft festival is on through the weekend with various activities and social media, Instagram. So it's something to that people can just gently follow. Um, through the weekend I think. Absolutely so if you're on any social media if you follow the hashtag um, hashtag digital craft festival stuff will come up or you can follow at craft festival 
um, on Instagram and uh, Facebook. They've got stuff going on there and all of the makers are sharing on their own platforms, but by following the hashtags, you'll be able to see what, um, what's happening. I'm just trying to write the hashtags in the chat, but I can't actually find the hashtag button. I'm sorry, I'm terrible at technology. No, I think lots of keyboards don't have hashtags. Yeah, I found it. Well done. And I've put the where you can find the free makes and you just click on the big button that says free makes when you follow that link. Um, and hashtag. So unit 12, for those of you who don't know, is, is uh, Jen's gallery space and also st shared studio space. And a number of your uh, colleagues are in the craft festival, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, so what we've done is uh, unit 12 has a listing under um, mixed media. So um, myself, um, my partner print garage which is his print garage that I'm actually sat in rather than it being an instrument of torture behind me it's actually a drying rack um uh Fran Buxton mixed media Rachel Butlin who's um a contemporary jeweler and in fact Nicholas happens to be wearing one of her brooches um uh, Ruth Allen is a screen printer and illustrator and Ruth Proud is um a textile artist so we're all taking part in the craft festival so showing um new work or work um as part of the show so you can go on to the digital craft festival website and have a look at all the different categories of all the different makers um that they've got exhibiting as part of this so jen i have a final question for you because you do use an awful lot of different sorts of papers but i was wondering if you did have a one that you find particularly joyful when you use it or a particular genre which you particularly enjoy using i think it's it obviously changes and i think you use a lot gets boring um and i must admit actually these days i don't use book pages very much anymore um somebody once criticized what's the word criticized um pointed out that my work was very cream and um, which is of course if you're using papers it's hard not to be and i did make an effort to actually try and use loads of different other papers um so for me, it's it's when I find one that really resonates. And at the moment, it's botanical illustrations. Um, when I can find ones that have got really bright pops of colour, and then I'm complementing that with really bright pops of um, hand stitch on my work. So that's what I find exciting at the moment um, is the colours and the illustrations. But saying that, probably my best ever paper to find is a, a cookbook that's been splattered with ingredients that people have annotated and written on and um, that's ended up being the one that when I find it um, in a charity shop or a flea market it's utter treasure it's somebody's loved that it's had a life a lot of the books are things that people are either throwing away or being giving away for pence in charity shops because they're considered damaged. Um, but for me, that's what I quite like is giving new life to things um, that have been unloved or being thrown away. And actually I'm working with someone who found me on Instagram called the Penguin Chap, um, who's a very dapper chap, who um, is sending me his end of life books because they're not in a good enough condition for him to be able to sell. But actually, it means for him, they're not being wasted. They're not going into landfill. I'm paying him a few pence, so it's worth his while. Um, so they really, really are end of life books is what I've always wanted. I don't want to be wasting things that somebody else could use. So it's trying to give these these unloved papers new life. This is where we see those amazing penguin jugs and yes, um, yes. different things. From, oh, lovely. Oh, that's really nice to hear about that collaboration. Great, folks. Well, I've got a last question from Mary. Are handmade papers um, any good? Question mark. I don't. The honest answer is I don't know because I don't use them. For me, it's second life. But I would say have a go. I think with everything, it's having a little practice, having a little go, seeing what works for you. Um, there's some things like um, I make quite a lot of work or have done in the past out of tea bags. And people have said, well, you can buy tea bag paper. But for me, it's the fact it's had another a life. It's the history and the narrative. So make some out of handmade paper. And I would absolutely love to see if it works. I think it would to do with it being not too thick or not too thin. It would probably work quite well, I imagine. Mm. 
Well, I'm really glad that you've been able to inspire us all today. And lots of people are putting comments in the chat saying it's been very relaxing. It's been nice to be together. So that's really lovely. And we're going to draw to a close now. But um, thank you, Jen. You've uh, enabled us all to make these amazing flowers, which we didn't know we could do an hour ago. And it's been really lovely to spend time with you and to have you share your skill and experience and your knowledge with us. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you, Nicola, for doing this. I really, really appreciate having such a calm, lovely, gentle soul to help me out this afternoon. So thank you. Well, it's a part, I'm a little bit of a love in because I just adore spending time with you. So thank you very much. So folks, it's have a lovely digital craft weekend. Enjoy browsing, enjoy doing your origami flowers tonight, uh, your paper roses. And um, no doubt we will see you all again soon uh, when either together in real life or maybe on another Zoom workshop. But it's been a real pleasure to be with you today. Thank you. Thank you.